Hey there guys, it's Nick, the ASMR nerd, and welcome to another episode of Relaxing Reviews. Today I'm doing my first ever microphone review, which is kind of a funny thing when you think about it, given that this channel is ostensibly all about audio, all about sounds. So it's strange that this is my first microphone review, but I'm very excited to do it. Today I'm looking at a microphone from a company called Fifine. The model is the K670, and this is a microphone that's aimed squarely at budget-conscious gamers, streamers, podcasters, those kinds of people. It's available for $43 on Amazon for the black version that we're taking a look at here today. And it's definitely marketed towards that crowd. It's kind of going toe-to-toe -to -toe in some ways with the more expensive but very popular microphones such as the Blue Yeti. But something interesting about the Five Fine K670 is that it has a condenser style capsule, a 16 millimeter condenser style capsule. And this type of microphone is actually very good for picking up quiet and subtle sounds. In fact, the microphones that you are listening to right now, a pair of Rode and T1As, are also condenser microphones. And so when I was talking with the Fifine representative, I asked them, you know, would this microphone be good for ASMR? Could it be used for that? And they thought that, yeah, it could be, but it's a mono microphone, which means it doesn't have stereo capsules. It only picks up one channel. And ASMR is so much about that sense of space and kind of going from one ear to the other. And so I said, well, what if, <laughs> what if we took two of these microphones and used them in tandem? Could I get a good stereo sound then? And the rep said, yeah, sure. So they sent over two of these microphones. Now, this is a USB microphone, no surprises there. That means that it contains within it the analog to digital converter, and then that digital signal is sent straight to a PC, for example. Um, and most PCs are not really designed, or well, I shouldn't say most PCs, but operating systems, Windows in particular, is not really designed to receive two USB inputs and use one as a, a left channel and one as a right channel. So I'm going to be attempting to set it up that way for our tests later in the video. I think I'll be able to get it figured out. Um, and I'm going to be testing out the Fifine K670 as a stereo pair for ASMR purposes. I'll also be testing it out, however, um, as it's more intended to be used for, for instance, um, just communication, you know, when gaming or for streaming, these kinds of things. So, uh, as I said, Fifine very kindly sent over a pair of these microphones for us to look at here today, and that's exactly what we're going to do. So without further ado, let's take a closer look at Fifine's K670 USB microphone. And here we have the Fifine K670B in box. And, of course, I'm only going to unbox one of these. They did send two, but they're going to be identical. So, we'll just do the one here. Um, it's a very clean-looking box, isn't it? <laughs> There's nothing on the front except for the branding. Five fine technology. And that's sort of embossed in black. As you can see, otherwise, nothing going on on the front. The box itself is very heavy. This is very solid feeling. 
nothing on this surface. Some very basic certifications over here, along with made in China. Nothing over here. And just a URL and contact email for FiFind here. And then on the back, literally nothing. It is blank. Uh, I find it a little strange that there is no model number listed anywhere on here. If I didn't know what was being sent to me, I'd have no way of knowing what was on in the box. Um, but I suspect that's so they can reuse the same box for different models. And that's fine. That's a practical cost-saving measure, isn't it? Okay, let's get inside here. Cut those seals and... inside the lid. No padding or anything, but uh, lots of nice padding foam inside the box. What have we got here? It says FiFind contact info and social stuff on the back here. Dear sir or madam, how very formal. Thank you for being our valued customer. We hope to meet your needs and impress you with our customer experience. Apparently there's a product demonstration on their website. They've got a Facebook. Easy to get an upgraded two-year warranty. So you can sign up on their website for a two-year warranty. Which seems pretty reasonable. Now, granted, on a premium microphone, like a Rode or something, you get a 10-year warranty. Uh, but that is also uh, many times more expensive than what we have here. So we can't expect miracles now, can we? I don't off the top of my head know what kind of warranty the Yeti has. I should look into that. I've never had to return mine or to call in for warranty service, so. Um, but it would be good to know. Here we have a user manual for the 670 and the 670B. They are the same microphone, the only difference is the color. We have the B, the black variant here, I believe. I'm fairly sure that's what they sent. Although, of course, it does not say on the box, does it? What's in the box? Microphone, pivot mount, desk stand, adjustable height, a USB cable. Talks about the two-year warranty here. The control panel which is presumably the uh, just the volume and such the gain this talks about assembly uh, mounting adapters how to properly address the phone side addressable you don't speak in the end, you speak in the side, of course. This is a large diaphragm condenser mic. Talks about the microphone output. Or the headphone output, excuse me. Should, should be a nice low latency or zero latency output. So you can monitor your audio. And... Here we've got some specifications. We have a pickup pattern. Okay, use a cardioid pickup pattern. 
Again, no stereo recording here unless you have two of them individually. Each one is a single channel uh, microphone with a cardioid pickup pattern. And then frequency response curve. Set up various operating systems. Pretty straightforward. It does not come with any of its own software, I don't think. So, I can actually show Audacity in use here, which is, of course, what I'll be using. All right, some other general usage tips. I think it's time we looked at the microphone. First things first, let's remove this piece of foam. It's just kind of a low density packing foam. Okay, here we are. So the whole product is packed into a similar kind of foam with these cutouts. We've got a very solid feeling and quite long looking USB cable with, um, hmm, with metal housings that feel quite uh, nice actually. And caps, got the USB-A end of things for your PC. Uh, and it is branded as well. Fine, fine. As is the Velcro cable wrap. Nice attention to detail on Fi Fine's part. Metal housing on this end as well. With these silver accents. It actually looks very sharp, very professional. The cable itself is uh, got a PVC jacket and looks to be pretty long. I think it's said in the manual how long it is. I actually didn't really pay attention, but let us see. It is over six feet, six and a half feet. That's a good sized USB cable. What else have we here? We have a very heavy <laughs> metal disc, which I must assume is the base of the stand. It's solid, like it's really heavy. Literally just a big chunk of steel with a threaded hole in it, presumably, for mounting. Uh, will be some kind of, you know, tube that goes in there, I guess. Uh, and then the bottom is a textured rubber from a non-skid surface. Very nice. Very, very solid. I mean, it's literally just a chunk of metal. But over here we've got a small adapter, which is for mounting this thing on, I don't know, three quarter inch threaded mounts, maybe? Again, it says in the manual exactly what it's for, but. Uh -huh. And here's our. Our adjustable tube. And now this is a slightly janky solution, I have to say. It's basically uh, just a three section mount with these threaded sections. But you know what? It feels solid. It's made of this nice matte textured metal. Um, Sorry, that sounds kind of awful. Okay, that's 
done up tight and has a terrible noise, so I probably cut that out to spare your ears. Anyway, uh, when they're all screwed together, it's just a solid kind of tube thing. It is very solid. I know I keep using that word, but that is my impression here so far. Just solid, heavy metal construction, which makes for a good impression quality-wise. And then we have the actual item of interest, our microphone, which itself has very solid metal construction. Uh, honestly, at this price point, the feeling of quality I'm getting here is uh, way more than I expected. <laughs> like, the build quality is really good. It's on par with uh, much more expensive microphones I've used. Um, we have a grill here, which is made of metal. We've got our volume knob or gain or no it's volume i wonder which it is interesting is it volume or gain because we've got over here a headphone jack as you can see um so i'm wondering if this knob controls gain for the microphone or volume for the output on a yeti you have knobs for both. I must imagine that this is gain for the microphone. That would be the most important control to have physically, you know, on the microphone, I would think, but I could be wrong. Uh, the knob itself is, mm, I think, plastic, but it has a pleasing action to it. Feels solid. Uh, the mount, however, this mount that you see here, this is plastic. As is this, and this whole assembly. And it looks, mm hmm, yeah. So this whole thing, I think, oh no, ah, there we go. So if you don't want to use the included mount, if you wanted to put it elsewhere, attach it to a boom arm or some kind of shock mount, this ring comes off, and this whole plastic uh, arm assembly here um, just is removable. And it feels pretty cheap, I won't lie. It's just kind of cheap plastic threaded mount there, um, but I expect it will get the job done. We will try it with, of course, the stock mount, and then I will also try it uh, with my other mounts. I'm very curious to see, actually, if these will mount in my road shock mounts. I have a funny feeling they probably won't, but I will try. I think it will mount on my Rode PSA-1 uh, boom arm, though. Might work with my Yeti, or my blue uh, radius shock mount. That may work. Um, so, I see that just screws on there. Uh, and then here's where we plug in our USB uh, type B connector which is not a common connector for USB, but is frequently used with microphones. I do not know why. It just seems to be convention. But that plugs in like so. Ta-da! Okay, so let's, uh, it's a pretty tight fit, but that, that does work. Let's see if I can remember how this went on. Uh, like so, and then I suppose like so. You 
know, it's a simple solution, honestly. Uh, not necessarily the most solid feeling, but it looks like it gets the job done. And then this goes like so. You can tighten this down a little. Uh, this appears to thread in here. Actually see the capsule in there. Look, you can see it catching the light. There we go. There's the capsule, although I guess the uh, business side of it is there. So you can see that in there. Also, I didn't mention, but we've got some Fi Fine branding beneath the volume knob. And then this whole unit, I probably should have done this here. There's a better way to do this. A smarter way to do this. Let's screw the base into the microphone rather than the other way around. That threads nicely. And there we have it. Just like so. The microphone can be adjusted from there to all the way back, I guess. You wouldn't want to use it that way, but uh, it can come all the way back there. Or into this sort of full forward position, which you can't really see just because of the height of the camera here, but I'll just put it on its side so you can see like so. So that's about it. Uh, that's as high as it gets, obviously, off of your desk, but you could remove sections if you wanted it to sit lower, although I do not know why you would want it to sit lower necessarily, but you can do that. And of course this can be, you know, tightened down so that uh, it sits at more of an angle angled up towards your face, if you so desired. Okay, and I think that is the whole thing. Otherwise, we've got just, just a foam, empty foam padding in the box. Yeah, that's everything. Okay, let's put that aside. So, I must say, uh, in terms of uh, build quality and feel, uh, really, really impressed with this for the price. It feels super duper solid. Uh, I have no worries that this stand is going to work just fine. The base is heavy enough that there's no way this is going to tip over. Uh, the mic itself feels very well made. Everything is metal except for this little bracket and, uh, hinge here, which is somewhat worrisome, but I don't think it's going to break on you. It seems well made enough, at the very least. Uh, so I'm going to be trying this out next. I'm going to be trying it out uh, with the default stand. I will also try to get it working with my Rode PSA-1 um, boom arm, and also the shock mounts which are holding the very microphones that you are listening to right now. Not sure it's going to work with those. We'll just have to find out. This is all experimentation. And then, of course, the big question is, well, you know, one big question is, what's the sound quality like? We will test that out, I'll give you some sound samples. Um, the other question is, can I set up a pair of USB microphones for stereo recording? I believe there's ways to do it. I do not know if it's particularly easy. So that's going to be part of my adventure here as well. Uh, and of course we will be testing these and their applicability for ASMR. That is the big question here. 
All right, let's get on with it. So I've tested out the Fifine K670s a little bit. These are them right here, right here. And I think the way we're going to do this is thus. Um, we've got, as I mentioned, two microphones here. Uh, I did test them out in um, both my radius shock mount, which I have for my Blue Yeti. They do not fit the radius shock mount. I think they would fit on the Rode PSA boom arm, but not with the shock mount. These shock mounts right here are for my Rode uh, NT1A microphones that I usually use. And you don't normally see the microphones because I normally have the camera quite a bit closer. You are usually much closer to me. Um, but I'm doing this so that you can see the microphones. You can see when I'm going to one ear, when I'm going to the other ear. Now, I must admit, these microphones, the the Fifine microphones, don't quite fit these Rode shock mounts. It's close, but they don't quite thread <laughs> into the bottom of the shock mount. So I've actually just got them sitting here. They're just sitting in the bottom of the basket of the shock mount, more or less. And it seems to work. They're relatively stable, as long as I don't jiggle, uh, you know, the stand or anything like that. So that's how we're going to test them. But I'm going to make a little bit of a game out of this for you. I'm going to go through a series of kind of classic ASMR triggers, some whispering, some soft speaking like this, uh, and some tapping, things like that. But I'm going to cover up the microphones. There's going to be just question mark boxes over them. So you won't know whether I'm using the Fifine microphones or my regular Rode microphones. At least that's the idea. I'm hoping that I can do it in such a way that you simply can't tell except by listening. So I will do, uh, a, you know, paired um, recordings of triggers. So I'll do whispering with one set of microphones and whispering with the other set of microphones. Then I'll give you an opportunity to guess which set was which, and then I'll reveal which one I was recording with uh, in each set. Does that make sense? I think that makes sense. That's what we're going to try anyway. <laughs> um, so I hope it's both relaxing and kind of fun for you, and you can judge for yourself. Now, I should point out two important things before we get further into this. One is that these microphones from Fifine are significantly cheaper than the Rode microphones that I usually use. They are, um, uh, let's say, I think they're $43, I'm pretty sure, for the black models. $43 a piece. The Rode microphones are almost $300 a piece. Granted, that includes the shock mounts and the uh, XLR cables. But still, huge uh, gulf in price there. So um, if they can compete favorably at all, these Fifine microphones, I think that's pretty impressive. Also worth noting, these Fifine microphones are not really designed for stereo recording, for stereo imaging. Each individually is a mono microphone. Mono microphone but I'm using some kind of tricks <laughs> to get them to record in stereo as a left and or left and a right, left and right channel. Um, I'm using actually a very old piece of software. It's called Alice, A-L-I-S. And I will link that as well as the old Java runtime that's required to get it to work. Um, but it's harder than you might think to record using two USB microphones in stereo as a left and a right channel. It is actually pretty tricky without um, expensive software, anyway, like Adobe Audition or something like that. Even then, it's not straightforward. Windows is just really not set up for it. So 
it's a bit finicky to get these things working in stereo, but again, considering their low price point, I figured it was worth trying, uh, and it does appear to be working after some fiddling. Two other things really quickly. The first is that I am not going to be editing this audio. It's just going to be raw audio that you hear. I normally do a little bit of polishing to my audio, just a little bit of EQ, a little bit of noise removal, very subtle stuff, but I'm going to do virtually none of that, um, except maybe um, a high pass just to get rid of the really low frequencies, so there's nothing too boomy. But I want you to hear what is more or less natural sound coming out of these microphones. The other thing is, of course, because these are USB mics, they have to be plugged into a computer to record. Um, they're plugged into my laptop, which is sitting over there right now. It's pretty quiet, but it does have, you know, a fan in it that might contribute a tiny, tiny bit of white noise. Um, so if you hear a bit more white noise in the background than normal, that could be the factor. I will keep the laptop running, whether I'm recording with the Fifine phones or with the Rode microphones, just for a level playing field. Normally with the Rodes, I record using a Zoom H4n Pro, um, which is silent, so there's no additional noise from the interface in that case. But here, because they have to record into the laptop, it has to be on and make a bit of noise. So. Uh, anyway, that's what's going to happen here. So, without further ado, let's jump on in to the microphone tests. Again, you won't see what the microphones are. You will just hear them. You'll hear a pair of tests uh, with each set of microphones, and then I will reveal which set of microphones I was using in which test. Okay? Alright. Let's give this a shot. Okay, the first test is going to be a whispering test. And I'm going to be going from one ear to the other ear, back and forth and all around in the middle, a little bit, middle, 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 back, 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 back a bit further. I'm in the center.
house and whisper very quiet, 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 very subtle sounds. Quiet, 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 shh, 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 very, very quiet. It's hard for microphones to pick up such quiet sounds. Very quiet. And now I'm going to get a bit louder, a bit louder, a more projected whisper. trigger is going to be tapping, tapping on this box right here. This is a box for a pair of TWS earbuds that I'm reviewing right now that you will see in a future review. These are from Aki. You might remember Aki from some keyboard reviews in past. I also reviewed a Bluetooth speaker from Aki some time ago. So you can watch out for this review on a future episode of Relaxing Reviews, but let's get tapping for now.
Are you ready to find out what microphones those were? So this was the second round of tapping. So in this round, you were listening to the Fi Fine microphones. And in the first round of tapping, you were listening to the Rode microphones. The next trigger we're going to be testing is speaking softly. Soft speaking. This is what I usually do in relaxing reviews like this. So this should be very familiar to you. We're going to speak softly in one ear. Softly, softly, softly. We're going to come across, 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 across to the other side and speak softly in this ear. We will speak very closely, 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 further back, 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 back. And we will come across the other way and we will start back and we will come close, 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 speaking softly, softly in the center. Softly back, 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 until I can't go back any further. And then we'll come forward, 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 speaking softly. Soft speaking. Let's go across again. Soft, soft speaking. Quiet, 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 quiet. Soft, soft speaking just like so and like so. All right, let's test out the second set of microphones. And time for the second round of soft speaking. Soft speaking. Soft speaking. Just quietly speaking not whispering, just quietly speaking near your ear, near your other ear, near your right ear, near your left ear, in the center, center, very close, center further back, 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 center as far back as I can go without hitting the wall. Close to the ear again. Close to the other ear. Close to the left ear. Close to the right ear. Getting closer, closer, closer. Further, 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 further. Closer, closer, closer. Further, 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 further. Going back and forth, back and forth, one side to the other, then back again, and back again, and back to the center, 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 soft speaking. Okay. That was our second round of soft speaking. I will now reveal what microphones I was just using. It was the Fifine microphones. Hope you guessed right. I guess it doesn't really matter, does it? So that means the first round of soft speaking was done with the Rode microphones. Now I'm going to make some sounds with this fuzzy, fluffy microphone cover. It's very soft and very quiet. I'm just going to brush it, and I might even brush the microphones with it just a, a wee bit. We'll see. But these are some very subtle sounds.
It's so fluffy. our second set of microphones with our fluffy what do you think those microphones were i'll let you think about it for a moment think about it do you have it in your mind all right let's reveal them those were the road microphones the roads that means the first set of microphones you heard with the fluffy was the fi fine microphones did you get it right maybe I don't know. <laughs> All right, and that was our interesting, probably fairly unscientific sound test for the Rhodes versus the Fi Fine microphones. Maybe it was difficult for you. Maybe it wasn't at all. I'm not sure yet because I haven't listened back to the results, but I thought it would be a fun way to compare them. Again, a rather unfair comparison given the difference in price brackets but it'll be very interesting to see if they compare favorably or not. I also want to provide you with an audio comparison between the Fifine K670 and the Blue Yeti. Right now you're hearing the Blue Yeti uh, in its cardioid pickup mode, so it's a mono signal, uh, which should match the Fifine K670 nicely. This is just the raw audio out from the Yeti, unprocessed. And I think this is an important comparison to make because the Yeti is probably one of the K670's chief competitors in that it's very popular with a lot of gamers and streamers and podcasters and these kinds of people. So this is the Blue Yeti that you're hearing right now. I am fairly close to the microphone. I'm just sitting by my computer here. You might hear a bit of white noise in the background from the fans. So this is the Blue Yeti. And this is the Fifine K670 uh, in about the same position as the Blue Yeti. Not exactly, because the Yeti is mounted on my shock mount, whereas the K670 is sitting on my desk, but they are uh, very closely positioned to one another, and I'm about the same distance away uh, from the microphone when speaking. So again, you can probably hear a bit of white noise from the computer fans, a bit of room noise. This room is not acoustically treated, so you do get a little bit of bounce and some echo, but you heard that with the Yeti as well. So I just wanted to let you hear this more kind of apples-to-apples apples comparison, perhaps a fairer comparison, uh, between the Yeti and this, the Fifine K670, because this more closely represents a typical use case for this microphone. It's what it's more or less marketed for. All right, so now that we've done some audio comparisons, it's time for me to run down pros 
and the cons of the K670 before providing my final verdict. And here we are. It's time to run down what I liked and maybe didn't like so much about the Five Fine K670. Let's start with those pros. The first thing that I really have to call out about this microphone is its exceptional build quality. A product at this price point, under $50, really has no business being built as solidly as this microphone is. It's almost entirely made of metal, with the exception of a couple of connecting pieces that are plastic. But this thing is heavy, this thing feels incredibly solid, it's uh, really stable on the desk using the included base, and overall the build quality feels like something that ought to be much more expensive. So big props to FiFine for making something so very solid. Similarly, this microphone looks really good. It's got some very sharp aesthetics, I think. It looks like more expensive microphones, and I really like the touch with the blue LED that illuminates the inside of the microphone grill. I think it looks really nice, especially paired with the all-black aesthetic. It's a good-looking microphone. It also has a couple of really handy features. The first is that gain control knob, uh, which allows you to change the volume of your voice input uh, to the microphone um, without having to muck around in software. That's really handy, especially if you're streaming or something and maybe people are saying you're too loud or too quiet. You can just do it, uh, adjust it easily with that knob. Similarly, it's really nice that there is a zero latency audio output on this microphone. That 3.5 millimeter jack lets you plug in your headphones and you get real-time monitoring so you can hear yourself with zero latency. It lets you monitor your audio uh, and it'll also work as an audio output from your PC so that you can listen to system sounds or your game or whatever at the same time, which is very handy. One thing I will say about it is it's a bit uh, noisy in terms of the um, just kind of white noise. Even if you turn it all the way down so that you can't hear um, your voice coming through the microphone, uh, you still hear PC output coming through there, and um, there's still just kind of a, a fairly high noise floor on that output. So it works well. You do hear your, your voice. You do hear the uh, computer audio, but I wouldn't use it for regular usage and listening on my computer just because of that high noise floor. You're better off using your output from your motherboard or whatever it may be. While we're talking about sound quality though, the situation with the microphone itself is pretty darn good. I think it sounds really good for its price. Now, yeah, it's not a studio quality microphone. Yes, the self noise and the noise floor on the microphone uh, is a little bit higher than some of the more expensive microphones <laughs> I tested against here. But again, for $43, it's pretty darn good sounding, and many people wouldn't be able to tell the difference for uh, typical voice chat, or for streaming, or even for uh, amateur podcasting, and that kind of thing. I think uh, the K670 is more than adequate, and it is certainly a huge step up from like a headset mic or something. Um, it sounds way, way, way better than those kinds of microphones. Overall, it has a really pleasing sound, especially with the vocals, I think. It sounds nice and crisp and sharp, but vocals also sound full. They're not thin or anything like that. Um, very good frequency response. Um, overall, really impressive uh, sound quality given its price point. Another pro is that it's got a two-year warranty. This matches competitors like the Blue Yeti, and it shows that Five Fine has a fair amount of confidence in the quality of the product they're creating. And finally, 
this microphone is affordable. I keep mentioning that because it's kind of the key that makes it all work, right? Um, you know, the sound quality is good, but not mind-blowing. Um, but given the price at under $50, uh, it's really hard to argue with what FiFine is offering with the K670. And over here with the cons, I don't actually have very much negative to say about this microphone. Just a couple of small things, really. The first is that there's no volume control knob. Remember how we had that gain control, which is actually somewhat confusingly labeled volume. That is specifically to control the input volume of your voice or whatever the input from the microphone is to your system. It's handy to have that there, but what would also be nice to have is a volume knob for the output, 3.5 millimeter output jack, because that has your voice coming through it, but also all your system sounds um, coming from your PC or whatever and there's no way to control that volume output on the microphone itself. It would be really handy to be able to do that, and competitors like the Blue Yeti do in fact have a dedicated volume knob, so uh, that would be a really nice addition to the K670. I also have to mention here that the stand for the K670 is very basic. Now it does get the job done, the base of the stand is very heavy, just a big disc of solid metal, and the microphone wasn't in any danger of tipping over or anything like that. But in terms of the height adjustability, it doesn't go up very high off your desk, for starters, and then actually adjusting the height is very kind of primitive. You just unscrew the whole assembly from the base, take off a section, you know, unscrew the section. Um, of the post and then screw it back into the base. It works, uh, it's pretty low tech, <laughs> and um, there's not a whole lot of range of adjustability there, so it is a very basic stand. And finally, I have to say that from an ASM artist's perspective, the K670 is not ideal for stereo recording. Now, to be fair, it was never really intended for this, and it was never really marketed this way, but this is something I wanted to explore with this review, simply because it's something that I spend a lot of time thinking about. It might be something that some of you are thinking about. Maybe some of you are interested in starting an ASMR channel, creating ASMR content, and you're looking at getting a pair of microphones uh, that can do the job that aren't going to break the bank. Certainly a pair of K670s is a very affordable way to get a stereo microphone set up. Two of them is in fact cheaper than a Blue Yeti. Um, and you don't need an audio interface or XLR cables or anything because they are just USB microphones. Everything comes in the box, you plug them into your PC or laptop or whatever, and away you go. Kind of. <laughs> but as I mentioned a couple times in this review, getting um, Windows in particular, that's what I was using, to record two USB microphone inputs at the same time as a separate left and right channel is a bit tricky. And I was able to do it using this software called Alice, A-L-I-S, like I described earlier. I will, of course, put the link for that down in the video description. It's a free, I think, originally open source thing. It's pretty outdated. I couldn't really find a better way to do it than using this old software. I believe there is a way to do it with um, some software like Adobe Audition, um, but... Uh, I did, I don't have that and, and wasn't able to get it working through Audacity or anything like that. There are some challenges even doing that, uh, you know, even doing what I did. Um, the first is that um, using this software, the audio recordings were just ever so slightly out of sync for the left and the right channel. 
not a big deal. I was able to go in in audacity after the fact and just um, adjust them slightly relative to one another to get them to line up perfectly and get that nice stereo audio. But beyond that, I found, and maybe you found too uh, when you were listening, I found that the stereo image um, fidelity was not exceptional. Um, it was fine, but um, I think it's because uh, even though I had the gain knobs set to the same point, sort of 50% on each of the microphones, um, I think there's some differences in the volume level of each of the two microphones I have. They're not well matched. They're not um, a matched pair by any stretch of the imagination. And so um, I actually had to pan the audio one way a little bit to get it to sound like it was more centered when I was standing in the center and speaking between the microphones. I've never had that issue with, for instance, my Rode NT1As. So there's some um, fairly wide tolerances, I guess is what I'm saying, in the manufacture of these microphones and the actual response of the capsules in terms of volume and that kind of thing. And if you're just using one microphone for mono input, you would never notice these wide tolerances. But when you're doing stereo recording, trying to uh, get a realistic stereo audio image, um, that kind of causes a problem. So all of this is a very long-winded way of me saying, yes, you can, in fact, use two of these microphones for ASMR recordings, and the actual sound quality that comes out of them is pretty good considering the price point but it's a little bit finicky to get set up and the resulting output is not quite ideal all right so after all of that what is my final verdict on five finds k670 usb microphone well i think it offers a lot of bang for your buck for starters no product at this price point, $43, uh, has any business being as well built as this thing is. It is really, really solid. And it offers some desirable features as well. Uh, it has that um, zero latency audio out jack. It has the gain knob. Uh, and the sound quality situation is pretty good. Now, granted, this is not a studio quality microphone, and, you know, in the listening tests, it was pretty clear when, at least to me, it was pretty clear when I was listening to the Five Fine microphones versus, um, for instance, these Rode microphones. But that is kind of to be expected, <laughs> given the gulf in price between the two. Um, it's not perfect for stereo ASMR recordings. It can do it. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it as my first choice for that. I think there are probably better options on the market, but it could be done. You have heard it here. You can use two of these microphones to get stereo ASMR recordings. Um, but it's not really intended for that, is it? The K670 is aimed more at uh, gamers, at streamers, at podcasters, these kinds of applications. And in that context, I would say it succeeds um, really, really well. The noise floor is relatively low. Vocals sound uh, pleasing and full, has a good frequency response. Um, and in mono mode, I would even say it gives the Blue Yeti a run for its money in terms of sound quality, which is a pretty impressive result. So if you are looking to use it for one of those purposes, um, you know, if you're sick and tired of your headset mic sounding like crap, or if you'd like to do some streaming um, or some amateur recordings for podcasts or whatnot, um, and you're looking for something under $50, you don't want to break the bank, then I think you will be very well served 
by Fifine's K670 USB microphone. And that, my friends, brings us to the end of another relaxing review. If you're interested in checking out the Fifine K670 microphone, there is, of course, a link down below the video and at the top of the comments where you can check it out on Amazon and potentially pick it up for yourself if you are so inclined. Special thanks, of course, to Fifine who sent over the pair of microphones that we looked at here and listened to today. And special thanks to each and every one of you. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you found this video informative. And of course, I hope you found it relaxing. And I look very forward to having you back here next time for another episode of Relaxing Reviews. Bye for now, guys.